When two of the best mid laners to ever play this game face off against each other in solo queue, it's a matchup we all have to watch. The mechanical precision, the perfect macro. So in today's video, the Jizz is going to break down the most recent Faker versus Showmaker battle in the mid lane, and the tips we go through are very easy to apply so you can take everything you learn in the next 10 or so minutes and do it in your games. Now if you enjoy these analysis type videos, let the Jizz know by leaving a like down below and let's send it. Now we're going to be watching this game from Faker's point of view guys, and in this game he's on Zoe, against Showmaker who's playing Silas. So this is a typical range versus melee matchup. And you can see just because at level 1 these melee champions really aren't the strongest, Faker is going to position near the middle of this lane. In other words, pretty much on top of this minion wave collision, and this means that whenever Showmaker runs up, Faker can damage him. Even if he misses his Q here, he can still damage Showmaker via his auto attacks, but notice guys that whenever he auto attacks, he's always going to run away from the minion wave so he doesn't take that much aggro. This is really important and you're going to see here at level 1, Faker has already got Showmaker down to half HP. In lower elo games, this Silas will probably be on full HP and it all starts with how this range champion is positioning. In this little situation as well, you can see that when Showmaker goes up to auto attack the CS, Faker is ready with his ability. But again, it doesn't happen if Faker is standing well away from this minion wave, so he's always in a position to contest Showmaker and punish him for moving up to contest the wave. Now, Faker actually misses out on kind of an opportunity here because this melee minion is the first melee minion of the second wave. And those of you who know how to play in the mid lane, you know this means level 2. So when Faker auto attacks this to last hit it, we can still last hit this minion, but we can last hit it in a more advantageous position that will allow us to trade with the enemy champion, and if we had to choose a position as close to Showmaker as possible while still maintaining that distance to the minion, this is going to be the optimal position, so Faker can then make use of his better stats and his extra cooldown, but because he's so far away, he can't really do anything to Showmaker. So in your games guys, when you're going to hit level 2, try to adjust your positioning that puts you in a position which is going to give you a better chance of using your advantage. Now one decision I don't actually like from Faker here guys, is that he goes to Rome to put this ward down, but the problem with this is that he's actually going to miss a melee minion for it. This is really important in the early game because levels mean so much and instead of putting this ward here where he can actually see the enemy raptor camp he can still put it down over this mid wall and it pretty much does the same thing so never go to ward and miss minions for it experience is so important in the mid lane and you can still achieve the same thing in terms of vision but you don't have to miss any minions for it now when the next wave comes in faker is again going to position in a very aggressive position very close to the collision point of the melee minions and this means that for showmaker whenever he moves up faker is in a position to harass him and because of this pressure showmaker has to base and no doubt Showmaker is going to TP back. So what do you guys do with the wave here? If the enemy champion is recalling, do we just last it? Do we hard push? Well, of course you want to shove this wave. This will potentially deny Showmaker the CS, and what normally happens here in low elo is that players will TP back to the wave and then fight straight away. This is where you can ask your jungler for help, but in this elo, Showmaker knows that Talon may well be near the mid lane, so going on Faker is a risky decision. Now, Faker kind of successfully shoves this wave in, and lots of people are going to recall here, but I want to show you something. Faker has two cookies left, so in terms of staying in this lane, he has enough sustain, and it's not like Showmaker went back to get a large rod. So in terms of actual items, they're still pretty similar, Faker is still on full HP, and he's still in a very good matchup for him until level 6. So again, he's going to stay in the mid lane, posture in a very aggressive way, so he's on top of those minions, and Showmaker still has a very hard time of actually playing this lane. Now of course, we need to think about the enemy jungler guys, so when this next wave comes in, you can see that Faker is going toward the Raptors, and this ward I love so much more, because he doesn't miss experience for it. He gets back to the mid lane, doesn't miss a minion, apart from that one, and we can see how Faker positions in the mid lane towards his top side. This is because Rek'Sai, yes okay, he was spotted on the ward previously, but Faker's ward assures him that Rek'Sai isn't near this top side. So it's very important guys in your games as well to deliberately position yourself towards one side of the lane. Now because of this pressure Faker has, he also thinks that Showmaker is going to recall here, so he's going to move up just on the edge of this raptor wall. This gives him a lot of vision of the enemy tower and he can see Showmaker backing, so of course he wants to stop this because this will waste Showmaker's time. This is a trick you should definitely do if you think the enemy champion is going to recall move up, get some vision, and try to stop it. Now in this situation guys, when this next wave comes in, you might be like, why on earth is Faker playing like this? Like he's playing so aggressively and taking free damage. Well this is because he's trying to bait Showmaker, but from Showmaker's point of view as well, this will look really obvious, just because he's a very good player, right? So whenever the enemy champion guys are taking free damage from you, be very careful. But Faker is doing it, so he can almost bait Showmaker into jumping onto him, and Rakan can come in and they would definitely kill Showmaker. So it's important to see this lane from both sides, and to take some tips from it. Now after Showmaker shoves 
this wave, Faker is going to clear it and then he's going to recall and buy his cooldown boots and dark seal. He's then going to get back on the map ASAP, which is something you should all do. Do not sit in base looking through the shop, get to the edge of the fountain, buy your items and then get back to the mid lane. Time is everything on the rift. Now after clearing these minions guys, Faker again is going to go for a roam and this is fine because he's not missing anything in the mid lane for it. Now he could stay mid and potentially damage Showmaker under his tower, but you can see he doesn't have that much vision of the top side of the map. So what he's doing now, he is protecting himself against the enemy jungler. This means that he can actually do that type of harassing with a lot more security knowing that the enemy jungler isn't nearby. So before you actually do do the damage guys to the enemy champion, make sure you cover yourself by warding near by. You want to have this lane stay as a 1v1 for as long as possible when you have the advantage like Faker does. And by putting this ward down as well, Faker knows that Showmaker is roaming to the top side of the map. So what does he do? Well, the first thing you should always do when you know your enemy mid laner is going to roam is to ping. This is so important, not just for you, but also your teammates. This lets them know to continue or discontinue the fight they're in. And thankfully, because the enemy cannon, who's actually card in this game, dies, Faker knows that they have the numbers advantage. So he's going to use this fog of war to his advantage and hit the wreck side with his bubble trouble. Rexai goes to sleep, and while he's asleep, you can see on the map, there are on-the-way pings from Faker and his two teammates. This is really important as well. If you know an enemy champion is caught out, ping on the way because you're signaling to your team, hey, let's go on this guy, let's try to kill him. Because in lower elos, guys, there's such a lack of communication, and it's really a cornerstone of playing good League of Legends. Now, because of this advantage the blue team has, they will eventually kill Showmaker under this tower, and they are in an amazing position to win this game. And though this comes at level 7, level 8, it's pretty late in the game, so don't feel any pressure, guys, when you're in a range versus melee matchup to actually win the lane at level 2 or 3. Take your time, build that advantage, and eventually the enemy team will crack. But Faker and the blue team guys make a massive mistake here, and actually give all these kills back to the enemy team. Cannon is alive, Rek'Sai is back alive, and Showmaker is back alive pretty soon, and Showmaker also has teleport. So when Yone is pinging this cannon here, let's try dive him, it's like, what is the point? You're sitting on gold, bro, from the kills you just got. Recall, use the gold from those kills, cash in, and then you can get back and just dominate again. But for some reason, Faker is kind of influenced by his Yone here, and he overstays as well, and you're going to see the effects of this here. This means that even though Showmaker died before, he's had a chance to buy some items. Cannon as well. You can see Yone is just sitting on Berserker's Grief. You need to make use of the gold guys from the kills you get, otherwise you really are the same champion as you were before you got the kills. And this is why all of these blue side champions are going to die here, just because they overstay and they don't recall and base to buy their items. So in your games, guys, after you win like a mini team fight skirmish type of play, to actually make use of the kills you get and the numbers in your scoreboard and in the top right of your screen, make sure you recall as soon as you can to actually cash in on these items. This then swings the game back in the balance, but hopefully guys, this insight gave you an insight into how these top players play the mid lane and actually communicate at a high level. So take these tips into your games and remember, if you do like these videos, remember to leave a like down below, hit that subscribe button as well so you don't miss any of our future daily uploads. And if you really want to improve and achieve your goals this season, make sure you check out the Game Week website. Our challenger players and coaches are uploading up 20 videos a week. So to get that exclusive access, sign up and until tomorrow's daily upload, this has been the cheer.